In the grim backdrop of an unforgiving era, a condemned person stood, burdened by their impending doom. The weight of an immense crossbeam, a staggering 135 kilograms, bore down upon their weary shoulders. Nails, cruel and sharp, pierced their flesh, inflicting searing pain. Simultaneously, a wooden rod was ruthlessly forced through their groin, an act of unspeakable torment. Their cries of anguish echoed through the desolate air as their vulnerable form lay exposed to the world, stripped of dignity and hope as they bled towards their untimely demise. This horrific method of execution was known as crucifixion. With its sinister allure spreading like a malignant shadow, it would claim countless victims as time passed leaving a terrifying footprint across several ancient and modern nations. Some of the things discussed in this video may be offensive or disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. The Religious Accounts of Crucifixion The most famous account of the crucifixion dates back to the first century CE during the time of the Reverend Christian Messiah, Jesus Christ. According to biblical accounts, Jesus, the son of Joseph the carpenter on earth and the son of God in the Christian faith, met a fate reserved for the most reviled criminals of the time. Under the rule of Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor of Judea province, the Jews, angered by his insinuation as the Son of God, subjected Jesus to the agonizing torment of crucifixion. As chronicled in the four canonical Gospels of the New Testament, the crucifixion of Jesus remains a pivotal event in Christian theology and tradition. The cross upon which he suffered is widely revered as a symbol of both unimaginable suffering and divine redemption, serving as a reminder of his sacrifice and faith. However, according to the biblical account, Jesus was resurrected after three days. Nevertheless, this method of punishment continued after the account of Jesus or the Christian faith. In Islamic nations, crucifixion, known as Salb in Arabic, has deep religious and cultural roots. According to the verse 533 of the Holy Quran, individuals who engaged in war against Allah and his apostle and caused mischief in the land may face different punishments, including execution, crucifixion, amputation of limbs, or exile. These punishments, believed to bring disgrace upon the wrongdoers in this life, held severe consequences for them in the afterlife. However, in Islamic law, if a person miraculously survives this dreadful ordeal of crucifixion, after three days, they are granted the gift of life and their punishment is considered fulfilled. This gruesome execution of crucifixion, however, goes beyond the religious accounts having roots in ancient histories of the Persians, Carthaginians, ancient Rome, and Greek nations. The Greco-Roman World In the ancient land of the Kingdom of Macedon, Alexander the Great, who ruled the ancient Greek Kingdom of Macedonia from 336 BC to 323 BC, was known for his conquests and military genius. To add to his conquest, this great king planned with his army and laid siege to the Phoetian city of Tyre. When the city fell, Alexander reportedly crucified 2,000 survivors, showing his superiority. Accounts report that this gruesome fate spared not even his closest friends. Reportedly, a doctor who had made futile attempts to save Alexander's lifelong companion, Hephaestion, was also subjected to crucifixion. Historians even speculate that Alexander the Great did so far as to crucify Callisthenes, his official historian and biographer. Many believe that Callisthenes had objected to Alexander adopting Persian customs, particularly the ceremony of royal adoration, 
which had led to Alexander's chilling act of retribution to display his power and dominance. Unlike the Greeks in the Roman world, crucifixion was an execution method reserved for the lowest rungs of society, enslaved people, pirates, and those deemed enemies of the state. It was a public spectacle to show a horrifying display of power and act as a warning to others. Initially, it was a punishment solely for enslaved people, earning it the name of Suplicium Servile, in the words of the philosopher Seneca. However, as time passed, it extended to citizens of lower classes, known as humiliors. Under Roman law, if an enslaved person were to kill their master, the punishment was not limited to the guilty party alone. Instead, all the master's slaves, including the children of the enslaved people who worked under him, would face crucifixion as a collective punishment. Nevertheless, in Rome, the fate of the crucified did not end with death, but their lifeless bodies were left hanging on the crosses, abandoned to decompose and become a horrible feast for animals. Remarkably, there have been cases where individuals have chosen to undergo non-lethal crucifixion as a devotion practice and have survived the ordeal after enduring a short period of crucifixion. One such case recorded by Josephus, a chronicle of his time, was that of three individuals who narrowly escaped the clutches of a crucifixion intended to end their lives. In the accounts of Josephus, three individuals who were once acquaintances of his were subjected to the unfortunate fate of crucifixion. Overwhelmed by grief and empathy, Josephus, with tears welling in his eyes, approached Titus and implored him to show mercy upon them. In a gesture of mercy, Titus immediately commanded their release, instructing his attendants to take them down from their agonizing crosses and provide them with the utmost care to facilitate their recovery. Unfortunately, the journey to recovery was a treacherous one. Despite the diligent efforts of physicians, two of the three crucified individuals succumbed to their grievous injuries. However, amidst this tragedy, a glimmer of hope emerged as the third person miraculously regained their strength and embraced life again. Unfortunately, the names of these victims were withheld by Josephus. Now, although crucifixion was a favored method of execution by the Romans, it did not go without criticism. Cicero, a highly respected Roman orator, eloquently portrayed the gruesome nature of crucifixion, which he referred to as the cruelest and most abhorrent punishment, as he passionately advocated for its eradication. Furthermore, he strongly asserted that binding a Roman citizen should be deemed a criminal offense, and scourging them was sheer wickedness. According to Cicero, to take the life of a Roman citizen was akin to committing parricide, an unforgivable act of filial betrayal. Adding to his denouncement, Cicero emphasized that no words could sufficiently capture the profound wickedness inherent in the practice of crucifixion. As luck would have it on the Romans, during the reign of Constantine the Great in 337 AD, who was the first Christian emperor, crucifixion was abolished in the Roman Empire. This abolition move was reportedly driven by his profound reverence for Jesus Christ, the Christian Messiah, and the most famous individual to have suffered this gruesome fate. The Japanese Crucifixion during Japan's Sengoku period from 1467 to 1573, crucifixion also found its way back into the country's history after being absent from the land for over three centuries. It was believed that the introduction of Christianity to the region during that time sparked the resurrection of this ancient form of punishment. However, similar types of this torment have been utilized as far back as the Kamakura period. According to Petra Schmidt's Capital Punishment in Japan, the horrific process of crucifixion unfolded as follows in ancient times. The dreadful sequence commenced with Hikimawashi, where the unfortunate individual would be paraded on horseback through the town. Afterward, they would be tightly bound to a cross of one vertical and two horizontal poles. 
As the cross was raised, the condemned person would endure the excruciating thrusts of spears from both sides until a fatal blow was delivered to the throat. The lifeless body would remain suspended on the cross for three long, haunting days. If a condemned person died in prison, their corpse would be preserved and subjected to posthumous punishment. However, it wasn't until 1597 that a chilling event would occur in Nagasaki, which would go down in history, recording this execution in Japan. According to records, that year, 26 Christian martyrs, including Saint Paolo Miki, Philip of Jesus, and Pedro Batista, a Spanish Franciscan, were nailed to crosses as a public display of persecution. However, the horrors of the crucifixion did not end there in Japan. During the tumultuous years of World War II, this ancient method of punishment was said to have resurfaced. One particular account tells the tale of Ringer Edwards, an Australian prisoner of war who was crucified alongside two others for the alleged crime of killing a cattle. However, Edwards miraculously survived the ordeal after an excruciating 63 hours of torture on the cross before he was finally released. The Ancient German Crucifixion During the tumultuous period of World War I in Germany, a haunting tale began to circulate like wildfire among the people. The tale recounts a gruesome event of a brave Canadian soldier who had allegedly been crucified upon a tree or barn door, impaled by bayonets or combat knives by German soldiers. In 1915, the testimony of Private George Barry, a distinguished member of the renowned 1st Canadian Division, revealed this chilling tale's initial revelation. Yet, as the war continued, its relentless course and fierce battles consumed the land the haunting account of the crucified soldier endured. Once the fighting had subsided, two separate inquiries were undertaken to unveil the veracity concealed within this ghastly narrative. One investigation was an official inquiry, while the other was an independent endeavor spearheaded by the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. With their meticulous efforts, both investigations reached a similar conclusion there was no credible evidence to substantiate the chilling account. It seemed that the rumor had been just that, a rumor born out of the chaos and horrors of war. But as time marched on and memories faded, a twist in the tale emerged. In 2001, British documentary maker Lane Overton wrote and published an article that reignited the discussion. Overton boldly claimed that the story of the crucified soldier was indeed true, and he even went as far as identifying the soldier as Harry Band. Today in modern Islamic states of Saudi Arabia, Iran, Iraq, and other non-Islamic states, this gruesome form of punishment is still reported to be in use. As recently as February 2015, the United Nations Committee on the Rights of the Child reported that in the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant, or ISIL, or more known as ISIS, this cruel execution was used to carry out a mass execution of children. These children were said to have been beheaded, crucified, and buried alive. So, what are your thoughts on this punishment? Let us know in the comment section below, and remember, to hit that subscribe button. To watch more insane and amazing stories, click on the video options on the screen. You won't regret it.